Get outside. Get outside. We're talking about the old, the outdoors today. Which is Aren't interesting. We? Where my tongue was, yeah. apparently. Everything we're going to talk about today is something you could take camping, hiking, fishing. All the fun stuff we do in the summertime. Boating. Yes. Awesome. Boating, Clarice. <laughs> All the fun stuff we do in the summer. That's true. I'm going to sit in my air conditioning and watch television. But yes. right now, it's time for <laughs> Guys Talk Knives. <laughs> Welcome to Guys Talk Knives. We are brought to you by Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, SMKW.com. You are? Jason. And you are? Nathan. <laughs> yes. I knew she was going to do it. It's Swag, <laughs> a.k.a. Nathan. Nathan. We are talking outdoors knives and fun stuff today. <laughs> We're part Na of the guys now. With, exactly. <laughs> right. That's hilarious. Uh, Jason, Nathan, and Bob. So here's the thing. I, like you said in the intro, I... I'm really, I used to be, I used to do it a lot, I just don't anymore. I sure, usually sure. don't get any outdoors. It's not that I didn't like it, I just don't find the time to do it anymore. No, no I agree completely, and I don't, I mean, I don't do nearly as much hiking because, well, one of my feet is not right. very hiking friendly. But That's just excuses. No, I still hike, <laughs> just not what I used to hike. But uh, it, it is, especially in this area, and for those of you who don't know, we're right outside of the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. You just can't beat the outdoors around here. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I'm not going to call out any <clears throat> names at all, but there's somebody that I know that goes to a park every single day, and her initials are swags. Do you? Yeah. It's a playground. It's a $1.3 million playground. It's got the coolest slide, man. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. It is when it's been raining and you pop out of that thing like a newborn baby. And <laughs> <laughs> up with bruise about this big on your leg, you gotta go explain to people I was playing at a playground. So I'm gonna say the worst things you could be doing. I mean, you probably don't want to carry one of these knives into the playground, right? But you go hiking and stuff. That you mean you got you got stuck at the falls, right? Yes, I didn't just get stuck. I lost my keys in the falls. Could we like what, find a which knife? Falls. <laughs> the easiest one, Laurel Falls. Yeah. That's awesome. No, it wasn't. I had to hike three, like three or four miles for someone to pick me up and take me to Signal so I could call someone to come two hours <laughs> to give me my keys. They, they had to get patted down by the ranger to ride in the ranger's vehicle. That's and you amazing. bet I made it awkward for him. <laughs> that is so good. So maybe don't go out with swags and go hiking. You might not have your stuff when you come back. But we've got really cool stuff to- Just too. take your keys away from her first. Wow. Yeah. yeah. There, there you go. You keep right. them safe and give them back to her when you're done hiking. Or like, you know, you use these. I'm not three. Yes, oh. that'd be a good oh. idea. Oh, oh, yes. wait a second. Actually, this is something we need to address here. Okay. Everyone here told me to stop putting keychains on my keys because it was gonna mess up my transmission or uh -huh. whatever it was. Well, because I didn't have my keychains is why I lost my key. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is it's our fault. Yes, yes. absolutely. I get it. As somebody who didn't tell her that, yes, it's your fault. <laughs> So if you go to smkw.com right now, you're going to find a whole bunch of things that you can carry this summer, this spring, and have a good time with. And we're going to try to hit six of them today. Throw in stars. Well, that's fun, too. <laughs> but, you know, usually not something you're going to sit around the campfire and do. Maybe. Uh, it depends campfire, on. Campfire, maybe. Right. Yeah. Hey, hold my beer. Watch this. We are in Tennessee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is true. Let's jump in and talk about yes. the first thing on the list because I think every time I think that Gerber does a great job of building tools that are task specific. It, yeah. And what was this one called? And I they kind of top themselves every time we find one. Yes, every year. I used to fly fish a lot. Mm -hmm. This would have been amazing. How many flies did you catch? That's well, I mean, it depends on the day. If you you're really sweaty, you get a lot of them. <laughs> so, Gerber, Magnaplier. Yes. Uh, Basically fishing plot. Fishing and angling. Let's go right here. You know, acute angles, isosceles. Boo. Boo. Yeah. Boo. Exactly. Hit the specs on this, or tell us about it, just a little bit about it, Jason. Just so, the best thing about this is it's an offset ergonomic trigger grip on this, this set of pliers. Um, so if you're using it to uh, disgorge a hook, if you're using it to, do, to, to crimp a weight onto a line, whatever, um, it's that trigger thing right there gives you an extra push. Gives you a little bit of an extra push. It has a lock. Uh, Swags was talking earlier about the fact that the lock is in blue. You oh. are not going to miss that. I, see, I love this thing because you can you can just snap it with your thumb. It's right in the right spot to open or close it and keep it locked down. Also and has that nice lanyard cord yeah, vest. Right to your vest. And then you're just, oh, it's here. Yeah. I can just grab it and 
go. No, and, and again, if you're in the middle of the, of the stream fly fishing, that's what you want because I have lost, I used to keep a pair of forceps just mm -hmm. stuck in my vest and I usually had a backup pair because right. I would inevitably drop one. There's probably three or four pair in the little pigeon. That's yeah. Just floating around. And I don't not think for the you're same the reason. Only one. No, definitely not. I probably could have just scrounged around probably. and dug another pair out. You just like be on the canoe. <laughs> Wait, oh, I stepped fine. on something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you got the really strong pliers here with I mean a good grip on the inside. It looks like you can actually change these out if you yeah. need to. So like if you need to replace the tips, you can for sure. unscrew those and oh, replace cool. them. The other thing that I noticed is the wire cutter on the side, which I thought yes. was a really great feature. So if you, you're you trying to get in there and get that hook degorged, then boy, you just snip it off if you have to. Just, just cut it off if you need to. Yep. Oh, does that not break your heart when you have to do that though? It, yeah, it yeah. does. Oh. Because my problem is then I have to spend time putting a new hook on the line. <laughs> and I'm slow as Christmas. My problem is that I got the anodized, like the pretty rainbow hooks. Oh, no, sure. And now I have to go find them again. Yes, yes. And here I was worried about the fish's feelings. Oh. Running around with a hook stuck in its mouth. Well, but see, you're assuming that there's a catch and release going on here. <laughs> this is a catch, catch and eat. Do you catch and release? <laughs> no. Exactly, neither do I. I don't understand uh, that. The only time it's I fun. release is if it's, you know, you're in a place where the fish isn't big enough. Right. And if you're fishing for brown trout in Townsend, it doesn't matter because they're all this long. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Because they're not native. Come up, go to Townsend. I, Come to Smoky oh, Mountain yeah. Works. You go to Townsend, you figure out where the tubes stop on the uh -huh. little river in Townsend mm -hmm. because people eat and snack on the way down. So the fish get fat eating Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you figure out where the pullout point is for the rafters and you fish from about a mile below that back up to that, that uh, pickup point for the rafters. Isn't that what Bill Engvall caught the dork fish with? Yeah. Caught it? Corn dog. Corn dog. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I caught it on a corn dog. And you don't fish with anything natural inside the national park. What's the price point on this little bad boy that comes with its own sheath? It's 80 bucks. But again, with everything you're getting, with exchangeable carbide cutters on the side, a finger twirl, tether point, the sheath, which we don't need to just step across because that sheath no. is kind of groovy. The it, sheath has some is. really cool stuff to it's it. I mean, look at that. You've got the, the, the tie-in here that you can clip to your vest. Yep. You've got the belt so it can go right on your belt. That's nice. It yeah. Does. And it's there so that you can literally just reach down and do this. Now pull them. Yeah. And you ain't going to lose it. I dig it. I dig it, I dig too. it too. Put it back in its thong. It does kind of look thong. like a little uh, Gerber. Magnaplier thong. Yes. <laughs> nice. I like that. That's a, that's a great piece, and especially for summer, for even just for camping or, or hiking, it probably isn't a bad thing. You know, have. you never realize how much you need pliers until you don't have that's pliers. Sure. Period. That's yeah. I think why I think multi tools come in handy so uh, much. No kidding. Absolutely. Let's go on to the next thing. Yes. Next up is maybe my favorite SE right now. Oh, yeah. Potentially. This is the JG3. Yes. So imagine the Cody Rowan had a big brother, and right. the JG5 oh, like had a little brother. Is. This is that knife. Yeah, this, I, uh, when I looked up the stuff on this one, I people who use SE swear by this knife, it's slightly bigger than that CR 2.5. Yeah. And, uh, you know, James Gibson builds in exactly the right things that you need for a camp knife in yeah. the right size knife. You know, we did a lot on that JG5 sure. uh, this past year, but, this thing is that right size to handle all those small cutting tasks that you need. It's got the 90 degree spine on it. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's so, black oxide coated yeah. um, 1095 carbon, right? How long is yeah. the blade there? Uh, it's three and a half inches. Yeah, you got the canvas micarta handles, slabs, double rivets, lanyard hole. It's got the belly on it, so it's good grip. Yes, no, it really is. That That is a great point, Savannah. Here, I'm gonna let you have it. That belly on that. I got the cold stone My steel. name is, is Swags and oh, Nathan. Oh, I'm so sorry, Nathan. Swags and Nathan. Grab the belly, Nathan. <laughs> I knew you were going to do it. <laughs> no, it's just that, uh, again, it's a perfect size knife, in my opinion. Um, check out the sheath, too. That is such a deep carry sheath. Mm -hmm. Genuine leather. Drops way down low. Not going to come out. Not going to slide out of there just, you know, for no reason. Those it's traditional just, Scandinavian nice. style sheaths just rock. They're hot. Yeah, I think they're, we see a lot so more of them. Hot. Oh, so hot! What ends up being the <laughs> price point on that little SE? 
It's $99, but again, you're getting 1095 carbon with a 90 degree spine, a James Gibson knife, American and, made. And? A sheath. And? With Hesse. Ooh, a no questions asked lifetime warranty. That is right. <laughs> that is exactly right. You mess it up, they'll fix it. <laughs> yep, you send them something back that re resembles the knife whatsoever, even if it's burnt to a crisp, they're replacing it. I don't know, I was just thinking, like, you know how there's some things that you pick up, you can feel it, you're like, that's really good quality. It's just got, like, the great balance to it, because personally, I like whenever there's more weight in the handle, so when I'm holding it, I'm not having anything, like, tipping you don't it at all. Yeah, and it's yeah. got, got, I don't know, it's just got, like, a really good feel to it. Right, especially that mm. nice belly on that side. It's a belly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm like you. I dig the fact that there's <laughs> plenty of mess. I dig, the, I dig the fact that you know there's a knife in your hand without having a blade that's like that long. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And it's just you can just like feel the quality of that. Did you see how much it weighs? Um, I don't have. It's on the website. I don't have it on here. I mean, it's but it's seven point six two five inches overall with a three and a half inch blade. So it's mostly Hello. handle, and you've got you know plenty. I guess that's probably six or seven ounces, maybe. Yeah, probably so. It just feels good. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does. I like Is it. Is it bad? That's how I like do knives and makeup. I just like feel like the weight of it. I'm like, ah, I don't know about it. Seems kind of flimsy to me. But I don't know if that's a bad way to judge a knife either, because especially if you're going to use it outside yeah. for a purpose, you don't want something that's going to snap. Yeah, and a lot of people yeah. are going to uh, feel the balance on it. And well, it even not even, not even just that. I mean, like even whenever they're like thin and lightweight, you can still feel whenever it's got like that good just construction yeah. to it. It's going to stay in your hand. Isn't that but crazy that way though? That you like you find a when you find a knife that you really like to use, Kershaw. you just like yeah. it in your hand. Sure. <laughs> right. I mean, it's like at this at this molecular level of I like this thing in my hand. And and sometimes you know immediately when you pick it up. You're like, oh, oh this is yeah, this yeah. is. You pick that up and you go, yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, that bird and trout. Sure, that's me. Yeah, yeah. It, and it, and it's funny too. On that, on the flip side of that, you can have a knife that you look at that looks pretty, and then you use it for a while and you're like, no, I yeah. can't. I don't like this one. Or something's not quite in the right place. Right. You know, it's a, and and it, for other people, it's perfect. That's right. What I was gonna say, thumb like, studs. Studs. You can do thumb studs without a problem. Dude, I can do all of them now. Yeah. I'm She's just saying, I I'm so proud of this. Can't. <laughs> Right. For whatever reason, the way my hand's designed, I can't. I don't right. know. I have weird hands that, like, we can... You, you've, you've nailed those. Yeah. And you're nailing that uh, Leatherman Free. Sure. Yeah, better than we were last time. That's exactly What's right. next on the on our list today? The Sogfari oh. Bolo Kukri. <laughs> this is the big daddy on the table this week. <laughs> this you know what? I love Sog Tools. I'm not going to lie. If you are uh, listening on the podcast right now, I'm about to break out a really fancified sheath here. It has a, a zip. And it does. They were thinking. They were thinking. Oh, this oh, is up. so like. Oh, it's bad. Look at that. So thing. for the folks in podcast land, uh -huh. imagine a machete with an attitude and a sawtooth spine. It, it really is. That's a it, really good description. I know, right? Imagine a machete got uh, front end pregnant. Yes. Start falling over, just flopping over there. I like a kukri. For Good that, job. and this is a combo of a kukri and a bolo. Yeah. That weight that falls forward lets you do less work. Yeah. So as I'm swinging back down, it is landing in the right spot. It's why the the kukri, the machete, the cutlass, all of those things were agricultural implements back in the day. So, and we talked about this before the show. I just the, want to poke it so bad. Where's the your bolo, cloth? We'll wipe it off. The bolo is is Philippine <clears throat> by design, right? Um, this is kind of a, a gladiator Greek. Kukri design mixed with that bolo, and it's just yeah. it's weighted really well. You're Again, you're letting the you're letting the the physics do the work. Can you Gotta, imagine if Jason like <laughs> got one not of this these? Jason? Not this one. I'm talking well, about like Friday Jason. The 13th, like Jason. Aww. <gasps> Boo. <laughs> lose all my carbon. Diet, uh, Diet Mountain Dew down. Diet Mountain Dew down. <laughs> I can get it with the Kukri. <laughs> I can get it with the Kukri and be like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd really let you do if I didn't think it was gonna like shoot up and ruin John my hair. Kill John, kill us all. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we got the lights in here. Ah, ah. Can you imagine if he like replaced his regular machete with like this? I know, right? Oh, dude. He could, <laughs> so, 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 so. He, could, he could walk even slower. He'd he still get him. Uh, I think you could throw that. You know what's crazy about these dog tools? <laughs> you could. If you're you could, a, well, yeah. I mean, you could throw anything, right? The saws that are on the different sog tools, 
that sawback is the shiznit. It is serious. It is serious. Each it, tooth is is reversed back and forth, uh-huh. and then get it, just get and it, and then pointed. I mean, it it really is. That sawtooth on this, most of them you see and you go, uh, all right, it's decoration. When, oh, no. But you can actually feel it when, that's part of the reason for the zipper on this. Is it bad that you, the first thing I did was poke it? I, you have to. No, that's like <laughs> seeing if something's hot by first. touching it. You, you do this first and then you go, oh, ow, ow. It's like a cactus. And it's wonderful. Yes. Yeah. You're like, oh, that's so nice. With the sheath, it's part of the reason for the zipper on this. Not only does it keep it tight around this part, but you can also get the sawtooth away from the back of yeah. that so you don't <laughs> slice the sheath open. So when we tested folding saws, that, that saw to me performed better than anything. That the sure. saw saw and the way they make their saw blade performed way better. Can you did we hit through the specs on we this just not in yet, general? No. So So it's an eighth inch stick. Eight Show inch it to them. thick. There we go. Like so. Uh three C R thirteen blade. I thought um, we were doing an eighth inch mention. It has a tie knife finish, sawback spine, black craton handle, uh, which really has a pretty good grip to it. Uh-huh. Uh, double hollow rivets, rivets. I can't talk today. <laughs> He's trying. Lanyard hole, and then a spiked hammer tang extension. So down on the very bottom, you actually have a, a bit of a spike do, do, down there do, do. from breaking oh, glass. Oh, that's cool. We'll have to touch that, too. Yeah. <laughs> that was kind of scary. Oh. Um, eight and a quarter inches overall. Eighteen and a quarter inches 18 overall. Eighteen and a quarter inches all, yeah. That's, 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 that's the real deal. Right there, yeah. you throw that on your hip and you can go safari I, land. I even like the, the handle. No, we, we can stick it down here, John. I'm gonna just go tight real quick and show the handle up close. Yeah. Look at the grip pattern on that. It's nice. It's, I it's like the SOG does That's that cool. technological look. Yeah. yeah. It, you know, it's not just patterned across the whole thing. It's all these little start spread out and all of that. Well, they, I mean, they know where your hand's gonna look be. At that, look at that yeah. saw back. He is going to cut this table in half on accident. I'm gonna try. <laughs> Was it an accident at that point? It's not an accident. No point. soup for you. Melina's gonna smack you for leaving tracks on the table. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I like that. What's the price point? Um, thirty bucks. What? Really? Yeah. That's crazy town. It's sad, man. I mean, they—they—that's what they do. Thirty bucks. Yeah. That's awesome. I would have put this. With an attitude. Yeah, I would have put this at like forty or fifty pretty easily, especially with the sheath. That gambit, though, of very, very affordable to higher end and everything in between. Oh yeah, and and with this, they certainly have. How do you do this? That goes around the handle. This goes in your belt. It's a dangler. (laughs) That's what I was trying to tell you. It's a dangler. (laughs) It's a dangler. (laughs) It is definitely a dangler sheath. Most machete sheaths are dangler sheaths. Yeah, because you don't really want that really not moving. No, you don't want that to jab you back in the side as you yeah. bend down to do whatever. Man, you wouldn't forget that. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> I remember that time I stabbed myself with a machete with an attitude? Yeah, here's half my leg gone. <laughs> uh, I think I used it for an entrenching tool and dug oh, myself you know. a hole out in the woods. There I would go. so, so be the one to use that. that straps in just for an extra safety. Yeah. Oh, bet. Yep, so you I would so be the one it. to use it, like, just, just to be extra. Go put some pencils with it. So Sit and whittle on the porch out front. Flaying fish with it. So, Swags, who are we brought to people by? Because we're headed to that break time. Smoky Mountain Knifeworks. And what is the website? SMKW.com. How many products do we have online? Do you know? Like 80, though. Wow, that'd be great. Be no, I don't know, but it seems like Jason, it's a goal. Jason's head of e commerce, so <laughs> if you ask him, I bet he'll tell you. Between 24 and 25. Jeez, that's still a lot. Yeah, yeah. It would take you a long time to get through them all. Have you not seen my videos where I walk around the store and I can't even stay in one spot? I bounce from here to there to there here. I'm stopping. There's just too much to look at. If you haven't come to our actual retail store, please do. It's in Sevierville, Tennessee, just off of I-40 exit 407, about three miles up the road. Big blue roof. Amazing. It's rather hard to miss. Uh, You can spend three or four hours in here every single time. For sure. We also have the ability for you to get a catalog. Yep. You can sign up for that right online. It's at the top of our we probably have little page. One of the longest running knife catalogs. Knife in catalogs the, in the world. Absolutely. The largest knife catalog in the world. Comes out every month. The largest knife. Is it show like a place. novel every month that comes it's out? It's like eighty pages or so. It's between That's eighty where I got and eighty five mm-hmm. uh, a you month. And then before. of course Christmas is like twice that. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's awesome. Guys, if you're not following us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, please do make sure you're like, sharing, and subscribing to this video. We gotta take a little break, but we're gonna get back to some more guys talk knives in just a minute. 
Hey guys, it's Swags from SMKW.com. You know, we've been carrying autos in our store for quite some time. And in the past few years, we started shipping them to our Tennessee residents. But we're going to change that. So, now we're going to ship them to any state that will allow it. So, go check your knife laws and come check out our selection. Bye, y'all. And we're back <laughs> with more Guys Talk Knives. Guys, you couldn't see the stares that were happening to me on the podcast, so I'll just let you feel it for a second. Silence. Yeah, that's how it felt. Yeah. <laughs> that's how it felt right there. We're talking about outdoor stuff. Oh my god! Really groovy that. outdoor stuff. I'm still kind of debating that that Magnaplier. I'm still feeling sogtastic. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm telling you, that is a big machete. See, my problem is, and I know the next machete I'm buying. I've already looked at it. <laughs> Jason has his machetes lined out. I this do. This is 2020's machete. This is 2024. Well, no, because I know what I've got to do in the backyard of oh. the house. <laughs> And I want that parang. I feel like I just, I just now want see them. you say this, and uh, that I don't get outdoors and that kind of stuff. But you know I love my I fire know, pit. I pick on you all the time. But it's not I, the I case. love my fire pit, so I get to play with the machete, play with the axe, and that stuff. That is part of the fun of it for me. Sure. Right. So beating the wood apart, uh, you know, doing all that fun stuff. Even though, yes, it's in a neighborhood. <laughs> it's in the uh, the. Fire pit. See, the, the wood bit. that I use for the fire pit is also the wood that I use for our fireplace, so it's already split and ready. Because I buy it by the rick and don't have to worry about it anymore. I strategize my fires, yeah. so it's like, well, I could put that one log there, but if I were to baton it in half, <laughs> I could stack this piece here and that piece there. And on the burn pit in the backyard, that stuff's been removed with a reciprocating saw because I'm lazy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know what you guys do, but we just we just cut a tree down and like chop it up. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I sleep all night. I work all day. Where, why do you buy wood? Do you not just have wood like to just chop I mean, I've up? I've got pine trees in the yard and I've got hardwood trees in the yard, That's but boring. I don't want to remove them. That's boring. I, I got like, like a whole forest in my backyard. She's no, deforesting no, no. her neighborhood. Yeah. No, we actually are taking the we're taking them out. Nice. Because I'm tired of like seeing all the trees yeah, and like no, the little no, no. foxes coming out of here like, hey, I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Especially if we're burning inside the house, I want it to be dried and seasoned for oh, about a yeah. year. Oh, yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of need that. Let's jump back into this list. <laughs> I <laughs> Sorry. talk more about where you buy a firewood. Just don't take it to the National Park. Uh, exactly. Yeah, really don't do that. Yeah. Don't do yeah. That. They, they, they get You dirt. also you cannot get fined and frowned yeah. upon. Yeah, you can't take animals there either. I got fined for that. You right. can, just in, in the right places. Right. Well, I went to the wrong place. <laughs> they can't go on, there are only two trails that are dog friendly in the park. We're on the Buck, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're talking about the Buck Pack Light Combo Set. Oh my god, I love this one. I love, yes, this, this sheath, just. It's so cool. Is there a better sheath for two knives? I've not seen one. I haven't seen one that I like So I'm going to put it down here, John. We'll look at it real quick while it's still in the sheath. This is a two-knife combo. The sheath is a combo itself yeah. of uh, some very nice uh, double-thick ballistic nylon. And I think that's GFN, or is it, um, is it glass reinforced nylon? on the A heavy-duty polyester with a polypropylene sheath. Polypropylene. Yeah. Basically the same thing. What I have noticed, though, just by looking at this thing, is that if you really wanted that out of there, you could make it happen. Oh, yeah, you, you could definitely keep could. Probably polypropylene out of there, but this thing holds both, of both them. knives on your belt. That's and it's so a, cool. a Buck Light Max and a Buck Light Caper. Here, we're going to stay up here. You hold that one, and we'll show them in detail as they go. So, you're going to get this knife. Yep. And that knife. So, the Max, which is the, the one that Andy has, uh, it's a three inch drop point blade, 428C still, full tank construction. Uh, it has an Alcrin rubber handle uh, that is extra grippy, grippy, grippy. I know Al. Do you? Alcrin? Alcrin? I do. Um, the handle on that is, it feels great. Guys, if you're listening on the podcast, it's literally just a no nonsense drop point hunting knife. Yeah. <clears throat> it really flat is. Flat out. It's got some nice, a nice finger grooves in it. And the handle's very up ergonomic. on this. The jimping on the back of the spine feels amazing to me and it's nice and grippy. If you do that and that goes across the table. I was just gonna take the label she's, off. She's, I would have laughed so She's much. caping the label of her drink <laughs> over here. She's covering us in Diet Mountain Dew for the thing. You amazing. gave it to me. Uh, seven, seven point four inches. You're gonna be in inches, time out in a minute. 7.4 inches overall made in the USA. Yes. Step next oh, to oh, the. Hang on, hang on. Pinch grip on this too. 
feel we that. Got, you can't too yet. Yeah, we haven't gotten to the first pinch but, grip yet. Yeah, well, this is the first pinch grip. Yeah. We didn't know we had a second pinch grip, so the yeah. second one <laughs> came first. Which pinch grip, if you're wondering, right at the, the top of Hold the hand out this way, or I'll do it. Yeah. Right at the where the, <coughs> the actual handle meets the blade, show a pinch grip it, it is gonna is gonna actually give you See a place to put your thumb down and index. And this slopes down. I can literally pinch grip this yeah. thing. For getting really up close and doing fine work with it. Right. You pinch so dainty. It's my like pinky's out. Pink. I just trying to show like you. he's having tea with the queen. Yes. <laughs> so that's a really nice feature on that. Yeah. You get your thumb in there. With baby Archie. Nice. Baby Archie. <laughs> Tell when we filmed this. I know, right? <laughs> Tell, uh, talk about uh, this caper right here that she was trying to cape her drink with. So this is the Buck Caper. Uh, it is one piece, stainless steel construction, skeletonized handle to reduce weight. Uh, you have jimping, of course, across the back. With any caper, <laughs> you want to be able to, to hold that up close toward the blade so you actually have really fine control on it. Um, it's a two and a half inch caping blade, six and three quarter inches overall, made in the USA. Yep. It's just a light, easy skinner. Yeah, that's what it is. It is. Again, get on for this a thing, get in there. for a, a hunting so. hiking set, I, I mean, can you get any better than that? I don't think so. What was the price so. point on the I mean, whole it's, thing? It's forty bucks. Forty bucks for two knives and a sheet to fit both of them. Made in the USA, all yeah. of it, every bit of it, all of it. Forty yeah, bucks. I, forty bucks for both. And this fancy sheath. The fancy sheath, which you could go horizontal or vertical on the carry on that. So let's take this way. Let's put it this way. We could take a Benjamin downstairs, cool. and yes. we could be sogtastic and get two more knives and still have money for lunch. For sure. At Grill Bellies. Yes. Yes. Could you eat with your caper? No, I'm going to eat with that sog. <laughs> We need, to, we need to yes. do that one day. It'd be the most fun video ever. Find the most useless things that we can in the showroom for eating a meal. Oh my goodness. That's a great I'm one. so down. I know, right? Like we can go to like multiple different restaurants and just like, like he'll order like a steak and just break that thing up. <laughs> Use the saw uh, side. Sir, can we, uh, can we ask you to put that away? Your steak knife sucked. What See, do you want me to tell you? <laughs> you'll get my reference. It's Samurai Delicatessen. Yes. Yes. John Belushi, Samurai Delicatessen, early days of Saturday Night Live. Live. He would, he would cut pull out the, the samurai sword and cut the sandwich in half. I, I can dig that. So I don't good. know who it is, but I can dig it. So, that's 40 bucks, How does that make you feel? Oh, she doesn't know who John Belushi is. Oh my god. Animal House? It's okay. Oh, gosh. One day we'll have a movie education just, day. We'll just make her watch a whole weekend very of sad. movies. We'll bring her right into the fold. Gonna have to it give her happen. and Angela a list of. I'm sorry, coming from the guy that doesn't even like Harry Potter. I don't. I, I don't I, like it's Harry. not that I don't like Harry Potter. You it's that I just cannot up. possibly make it through a whole movie without sleeping. I can't be friends with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, come it's along. It's dark. Just... It's quiet. I'm old. I sit still too long. To sleep. <laughs> it just is what it is. It literally is what it is. God. I have one word to say to both of you. The list going. You've talked to your kids before. One word to say to both of you. Nulu Julu. Nulu Potentially the best named knife on the table. Cha ching Condor. Look at that. Now I give love us that. the give us the rundown you gave us earlier. Oh guru of the Nulu Julu. <laughs> guru of the Nulu Julu. Okay, so here's what I here's what I saw online when I started looking this thing up. Guys, if you're listening on the podcast, this thing looks like a fat kitchen knife. It real. does. So what happens is Joe Flowers and another person at Condor, they're teaming up. They want to make an Ulu knife. And they come up with this shape, and they're like, oh, that thing's great. Ah, oh, we put a handle here. We can do all that. And then they start to look at it, and they're like, that would make a great camp kitchen knife if yeah. we put the handle back here. So they add the pinch grip to it in these handles. They keep it nice and thin. Uh, they give it the big belly like an Ulu Skinner so this thing can skin, it can chop. This thing is just perfect yeah. to carry in the camp. So I'm going to put it down here and you hit the specs just in general on it. So of course, as we talked about, it's a Joe Flowers design, 6.67 inch, 440 HC stainless steel blade. Um, it's one, it's 0.14 inches thick, so again, a very, very right. thin blade. Uh, full tang, walnut handle, triple rivets, 11.5 inches overall. It's pretty too. And right. you get a welted leather sheath, which is. Doesn't this look like something fantastic. that just come? I don't know. Nanook from the jungle is just. It'd be Nanook of the north. No, mine's from the jungle. <laughs> but okay. She moved. No, it, it does. I mean, you. 
if you're not familiar with an ulu, an ulu usually has this same style blade, and your handle it sits on top of the right. spine. So it's like so this, right and then here. you have cutouts on both sides usually. Yeah. So the handle and you sits can up here. rock it back and forth to chop. Mm. And it's a, a terrific kitchen tool, and it's a, a traditional Alaskan knife. Right. They literally said, let's just. Make it a little bit more all-purpose. Let's stretch it out. Yeah, let's stretch it out. Make it a little more all-purpose, and you can use it for just about anything. I love it's the like name. It's like a butter knife on steroids. Right. I don't know. I get that. Remember that knife we did that had like the leaf-shaped blade? Yes. Kind of makes me think. Oh of yeah, that. yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. It's very nice. And it's a condor. I mean, come and, on. And You're with a that condor. Con I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow, Jason went full condor, and that frightened me even sitting over here. <laughs> what is the price point on this condor? Um, eighty-five dollars. Eighty-five bucks. Which Wait really is Salvador. That's a lot of knife. That is a lot of knife for eighty-five bucks. El Salvador, and they've been making tools, machetes, and other things. Yeah. Forever. We've talked about that before. Remember the their show. CTI. So nice and stuff. Condor tool and knife. Right. Yeah. Right. They were doing tools before they were doing. Oh knives. yeah. Yeah, so and I, mean, I would say that almost all of their knives are tools. Isn't Joe Flowers killing it with some of his designs for Condor? Just yeah, yeah. I mean, and let's not step on what is this sheath. I mean, that is that's a solid. I know, I put good, my finger nice. in it. It was really yeah. solid. It's really really nice. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> I'm just over here trying to fathom Dang the line. It. I put my finger in it and made it really really solid. That's great. It felt solid. It I mean, is yeah, solid. It, and I like, I like, it didn't for real. peel off. No, not like that, put it yeah. inside there. But I'm not gonna put it no, inside No, no, I'm just showing how it would rest on a belt. Sure. And dangle again. Really? Yep. I thought it would rest like this. There you go. Well, you could. I'm being smart. Put it here. Hi, guys. It's not coming out of there. Oh, maybe it is. Is. Do not hang this knife upside down. Yeah, probably don't want to do that. No. Yeah, that's why I didn't do it. I was a little scared. A little scared. No, you could buy some Kydex. We're selling Kydex now. Scurred. Nice. Downstairs. You make your own sheath for it. This, I think, would be a great addition to any camping trip because uh, yeah. you're going to have a knife that ends up being a kitchen knife in there. And it can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. It's great. 80 bucks from Condor. Yep. Condor. Moving on to the Grunts oh. Force Brook. Maybe my oh. one of my favorite We're just gonna keep this up here companies ever. that we carry. This is an amazing company. You get lots with a with any Grants from Brooks that you buy. Oh, it's so pretty. So drop the drop the four one one on the recycled because I didn't know this. Okay, so I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce the word. Uh, it, they make everything from recycled steel at yeah. Grants from Brook. They, cool. They're also one of the best axe makers in the world. Yes, right. Uh, they are making this a vaco, I believe is a what vaco. they're called. I think steel. so. Steel. Yeah. And what I read was that not only is it recycled steel, it's not like they just go, oh, we want this steel and it's all going to be made from that. No, they start sorting the steel to find out exactly what it is. And then they make alloys out of that for specific axes. That's so so cool. this hatchet will have a different steel, yeah. re still recycled sure. and reforged, than their bigger axes would. That's so neat. That is totally cool yeah. right there. Is They're it a also hatchet and axe? Is that a hatchet thing? is usually a smaller version of an axe, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, not right. I didn't know. No, you're fine. <laughs> so no, that's fine. The handle also they they try to use the um uh they're reforesting as they use materials for the wood. Yeah. So the wood is also going to be a place for... They're trying to be healthy for the environment all the way around. around. Now, anybody who's ever used a Grantsford Brook, you just know. It is an amazing tool in and of itself. Um, they are hand forged by individual makers. So instead of like a factory line, they're going through and one guy is making this head from start to finish and then somebody else is putting the edge on it. Do you know how wow. you can tell? How's that? So, look at the end of this of this hatchet. There is no... Right, right. There's, there's no, no spacer in the center. Right. Because when they added this on there, most likely the head of this was hot, and they attached it and drove they it down. Fit it. And then this actually swells up. So you can actually see where the, the swell is over the top of it. Right. Also, if you want to see this, this thing is cool. We're going to go down to the tight shot, John. Every blade is stamped with the maker's personal initials. Yeah. So once he finishes making that axe head or that hatchet head, he is going to stamp. That's an AS on that one. Yep. It's nice. 
It's just a really, really nice hatchet. Hit the, f I know we don't have full specs. What is how, oh, how, much, how big is this thing? So it's, thir it's a 13 and a half inch hickory handle. It's a one pound ax. Again, it's the Ovaco uh, recycled steel. It's a genuine leather sheath. I mean, it just is, it's just a. So if you are looking for a pack ax or a camp ax mm -hmm. that's going to last you forever that you can hand mm -hmm. in to your children, yes. this is it. If you just want to walk around camp like a bad axe, I mean, it's going to be awesome. How long were you waiting for that? I was, about 20 seconds. I thought so. I thought <laughs> as so. soon as you started you on your imagine? pack axe, I had it in my head. Do what? Can you imagine, like, what if... Maybe I shouldn't. I'm going to stop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like if I had a stamp like that, like... You remember? Oh, you'd be putting it on everything. No. I, like, remember the guy from, like... I don't want to say this, it's a bad word. Oh, like, that he like stamped himself with that brand. Do you know who I'm talking about? Johnny oh. Knoxville, Bam, all them. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, what if someone did that? That'd be terrible. Well, that would be bad. Yeah. Yeah. As we don't want to do that. As long as they like actually like healed right, it'd be fine though. Yeah, we don't want to do that. That yeah. looks painful. This thing is going to be great in camp. Yeah. It's not. You're not going to fell trees with this. No, but you're going to lop off branches. You're going to trim trees with that. You're going to be able to baton with it, to feather with it, whatever you're you're going to be able to chop apples in half if they throw it at you. You're going to be able to start your can your, sure. your carved spoon with it, right? Of course. You're going to, you're yeah. going to chop down that and go for it with this kind of thing. What was the price point you're on this? Way more involved with that than I would be. I'm just going to bring a spoon. I'm telling you. <laughs> you bring a chop spork. Spork it. I don't want a backpack already. I'm going to go full on K-Bar. Military do colored what you sport. Do, man. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mine's a CRKT eating tool. Price, I love it. Price point? Uh 140 bucks. 140 bucks. But it's gonna be an investment, guys. It is going to be an investment. If you look at the number of times you can use that over a lifetime, it, yeah, it's like a dollar a camping trip. Right. If you go 140 times. Yep. 140 times a dollar a camp. Yeah. And it's gonna last even longer than that. I'm trying That's to nice. like count how many times I've been camping. Two. Too many. Okay, oh. here we go. <laughs> Guys, we are brought to you by Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com, the world's largest knife store. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to tell you this, but I need you to like, share, and subscribe he to this video. To. Yes. We need you to do it. Well, you need to join the Army, the SMKW Army. Absolutely. And if you want to go see what else is out there, smkw.com slash SMKW Army, yep. you're going to see all of the different places that you can exactly. follow us on social media. The cool thing about that is Instagram and Facebook, every single week we're doing a giveaway. Mm -hmm. Every single week. And, and not just like little that. giveaways. These no. are like really cool giveaways. Right. Uh, oh, that's for sure. This morning, sitting in the office, it was um, uh, the, the new Tops Puko. Yeah. Was the Facebook. And on, on uh, Instagram, it was another. It was the little bugger. Plus, you don't want to miss our videos. I mean, we've got swag reports every day. Mm -hmm. We've got we've got these videos twice a week. One being live, mm -hmm. um, and they're just they're fun, they're informative, and we want to have the discussion with you. We want you to get involved, to talk about it, and to get your friends involved. For those of you who enjoy getting outdoors, that's what this is for. Tell us what you use, what you like, right. in the comments, and you know we've got it. We'll show it. And and here's yes. the thing, our community is hundred thousand strong on Facebook. Yes, indeed. Uh, no knife shaming. Period. Exactly. None. If you like sharp and pointy things, we like you. And we want you to be around us and talk to your friends. We ask a question Come on in. every single day. So we're trying to build that community with you. And The one this past week that asked if you would give your eyes to your significant other, I thought was the most interesting and got some of the best comments back. Yeah, the, if the one she person asked you went, to get rid of them. Yes, the one person went, well, I can always get a different significant other. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's some of that out there. But come join us, because it's a lot of fun. And we have a great time yeah. on the page itself. And we're growing into other areas, which is, a, is always good. It's fun, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to take this drink. Somebody else is going to tell you that this is the end of the show and wrap it to the end. You got this. This is the end of the show. Wrap it to the end. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Talk knives. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>